Hi everyone, I'm here. We're going to bring you into a Pilates session with the Stability Ball, but it's not just pure Pilates. So depending on which playlist you're looking at this in on YouTube, it may appear in the Pilates as well as the body conditioning. Um, you don't have to know Pilates to do this. I'm going to take you through an introduction where I want you to place everything, what I want you to focus into. Um, Pilates, if you have a grounding in it, will give you a little bit more of a sense of that, that awareness. But certainly just take it at your level. When we're working through things, I will give you options, how to make the movement softer and how to make it more challenging. But first rule of thumb, I do not want anybody to hurt their back through this session. So if you haven't done anything like this before, this is not the session for you. This is definitely if you're used to doing core work and you're definitely you're used to working with um, like quite strong movements in terms of that core work. So I'm not going to go on too much, but it is a lower tummy focus and they're within that. There's going to be hip flexors work. We're going to be working quite a lot in through the general core, but it is a lower tummy focus. So there's a lot of lower body work. Um, and we will be doing some counter um, strength work in between with the glutes to make sure it's not just totally over dominant and we'll do a little bit of a stretch out at the end. So I hope this works well for you. Hope you enjoy it and you feel the challenge from it. So uh, yeah, let's get started. Just make sure you've got a ball, a stability ball. Um, if you don't know what size that you should be using, um, you can check dimensions out every time if you're buying a ball that should give you a list of dimensions but I'm on a 53 centimetre ball, I'm only 5 foot 2 um, generally uh, if you're maybe over around 5 foot 4 or 5 foot 5 you might be on like a, say like a 65 centimetre ball but no matter what height wise of the ball when you're sitting on it there should be a right angle Now we're not going to be doing exercises like this um, in this session, we're going to be on the floor but it just gives you an idea that roughly a right angle from the centre of the knee to the centre of the hip uh, my height's just maybe just slightly low on that, but um, I like to feel a little bit more squidginess. It makes me have to work a little bit harder um, rather than a completely firm ball. But that'll just give you an idea that if you're in that right angle, that's about the height that you're working with. Um, so yeah, so hopefully um, if you need to go adjust your ball or do whatever, go do it. And um, we're going to start with a floor based warm up before we take it into the ball. And um, yeah, I hope this is a good session for you. So yeah, let's get started. Our aim is to, to make the spine feel really, really long. So in terms of that full body stretch, if you even want to focus in on lengthening through the back of the neck, and again, whether it's reaching through the heels, whether it's reaching through the pointing of the toes or the balls of the feet, but how much longer can you kind of stretch through your spine? When you feel like you've gained a little length, you can bring your arms down. We're going to bend the knees in. So we're going to focus this into your setup, first of all, of neutral. So the idea just with the legs in a comfortable position, hip distance apart. When you naturally place your spine onto the floor, do you notice, are you even from right to left through the pelvis, through the heavy bone there? Do you feel like you're even between the shoulders right and left? You might notice that one sits more off the floor than the other and there's not an awful lot that we can do about that but in terms of not knowing anyway but the idea of trying to be open across your collarbones and reaching long through the arms towards your feet and then letting the arms just rest wherever they they naturally want to go to and whether it's palms up. I want you to get that sense of just being as connected to the floor as you can. And then notice the back of the ribs. Does it feel like they are arched off the floor and that there's air between your low back and, and as well? So we're going to take it through pelvic tilts. So whenever you take an in-breath, on the out-breath, try to draw the belly button into the spine to pull the spine towards the floor and to pull the ribs down onto the floor. And then on the in-breath, let it arch up away, so air time between the ribs and the low back. And again, out-breath, starting from the lower tummy, kind of pulling in. So if you imagine that you almost had like a row of belly buttons, <laughs> you're going to use that as a sense of kind of linking front of the body to the back of the body on the out breath so that you are connecting to the floor. So in breath, again, arching off and then the out breath, that connection. And I want you to, to make the muscular connection as you're going through this so that whenever you are feeling that you're trying to connect all your belly buttons to the floor, that you feel the lower tummy tightening and pulling in, the skin tightens. 
when you arch it, I want you to feel like the stomach pushes out. I want you to make sure that even when you arch, you still have that feeling of everything pulling in. So when we're working, so this focus on the lower tummy section, I want you to make sure that if ever your back feels like it goes into an arch, you know that you're still fully in control of those muscles squeezing tight. Because you still want to be able to work with your back in different positions, but know that the muscles are acting as a, a tight belt, a support belt around you. But for most part, I want you in a slightly flatter back position so that we don't risk going into an arch, especially if we're doing movements quite quick um, through the session. I want you to, to really focus in on keeping connected. So the importance of this is because lower tummy work can really work into the low back. So I want to make sure that nothing goes pear-shaped, okay? So keeping that connection in, finding that you're almost in connection with the floor, that zipping up, if you like, or that pulling in, that pull up of pelvic floor, belly button spine, belly buttons to spine, everything that keeps that skin on the front of the body, pulling everything down and in so you know that you're engaged and tight. Now, once that setup is in place, notice how you tensioned anywhere else in the body. Try to let it go. The neck feels long, arms still feel relaxed. So we're just going to start with a few movements just to set the, the lower tummy up. So we're going to float one leg up. And as you float it into tabletop, notice whether anything changes. Has your weight shifted across the pelvis? Can you keep it even? And then float the leg down. You're just working with this right leg, if it's that right leg that you've lifted, lifting and lowering for five. And I want you to keep this lift focus in that every time you lift your leg, it's almost like you've got a, <laughs> whether it's like a lasso coming from your core down around your thigh, that you're trying to help pull the thigh bone into the socket to help pull the leg back up again. Whether it's pistons, whatever way a visual that you can work with for five movements that helps to encourage the core to help pull the thigh into position. Once you've done five, reassess balance centered and then coming up with the other leg. And again, as you're lowering and lifting, that you're thinking about that lasso or that piston, whatever works in your own mind, to pull up inside to help keep, again, the back in the same place, those muscles engaging. So that skin on the front, pulling the skin on the back. All belly buttons engaged. And once you've done five, then we're going to take it into single, single. So we're going to go up with the right, up with the left, and then down with the right and down with the left. So again, your focus, when we add in um, any aids, for example, the big ball, the big stability ball, you know there's gonna be more weight in the ball. So it's keeping that focus from early on that you're lifting, you're pulling the thighs into the socket and then keeping that position in neutral with the back. Drift it over, switch left leg lead, right leg up, left leg down, right leg down. So you're leaving five movements on the other side. Does it still feel like you're using that connection from inside to pull up? Or have you forgotten? Has the body drifted into thinking about something else? Once you've done five, you're gonna finish in tabletop. So you're gonna draw both legs up. And again, in that position, as your weight drops onto your tail, are you flat through the back in the sense that you're trying to keep all of those belly buttons in again and keeping more of a connection than allowing it to drift into an arch. So once you're holding in through there, we're gonna take it just one leg at a time, reaching out and back in, reaching out and back in, alternating legs, neck relaxed, arms relaxed, so that you're focusing lower tummy. When you lengthen a limb away from the body, you're trying to get this opposite pull up inside. When you pull a limb into the body, you're pulling up with it to pull the thigh bone into the socket. And I want you to notice as you do those five each side, have your ribs got lighter on the floor. Has your lower back started to come away from the floor more? Once you've done five each way, we're gonna take five with double. So you're lengthening and back in. You choose the height, you maybe want to go higher to the ceiling softer or taking them lower back in. Maybe a limit of 45 degrees towards the floor to keep that sensation. Again, you're pulling in, whether it's those lassoos, the pistons, or just thinking about trying to keep everything drawn in. Once you've done five, give the knees a hug and allow the lower back to kind of round out. So pull it in quite strong, let the tailbone lift and then let it grind and just take a little rock side to side.
Okay, so from there then bring the feet onto the floor. We're just going to take a shoulder, two shoulder bridges as an in-between there. So heels underneath the knees, arms relaxed again, neck and nice and long and relaxed, weight even. Out breath again, you're always focusing in, it's lower tummy that's kind of cueing that movement. Both of your glutes squeeze at the top, lengthen the knees. And again, that zip up, pulling the skin on the front of the body to the back to again, keep that focus still in the lower tummy. That's where your focus lies on the way through. Once you've done two, we're going to send it into glute bridge. So again, keeping that same sensation of that zip up or pulling in. As you send the hips up, don't let the ribs kind of open or flare. You're keeping all of that connected and back down. So each time you return to the floor, you should feel like you're still in that same place, that the ribs haven't lifted off. There hasn't been any other air time created between your lower back and the floor. Now once you're there, take the feet a little bit wider. So the, as you take them wider, toes are turned about. So again, again, just two, lifting, squeezing. Is anything releasing or are you still keeping drawn in? Lifting and going, just those two movements. And then replace back in. That's kind of just a bit of a reset. Take a full body stretch, lengthen everything out. Opening everything. And reset the arms back down. So hopefully with what we've just done, you feel that connection to everything in the lower tummy. You feel like you've done a little bit of work there. So it's keeping that in mind as we start to add the ball into this, okay? So if you have your ball handy, um, if you need to grab it, mine's gone walkies. So we're mostly again just focusing in on those movements. So we're going to use them, use the ball as a little bit of support and stability initially, okay? So once you've got yourself onto the floor, so we don't need to have the ball between the legs or anything to start with. You're just going to bring your spine down onto the floor. And then I'm going to get you to pop the feet on top of the ball. And I want you to set it up so that the heels are on top, around about hip distance apart. And again, that sense of being open, long through the back of the neck, shoulders open, relaxed. And that placement of the pelvis. So now you're not having to work essentially because you're supported by the ball of the legs. But keep that sense of drawing in so you know that the skin and your belly buttons are all drawing in. So from there, as you press one foot away, and you might need to readjust, but I want you to make sure you feel you've got good support on the ball. You're going to press one leg away and then draw it back in. So essentially you're holding the other leg in tabletop. You're reaching away and back in. Reaching away and back in. So it's kind of light just to start with. You're not working as hard, but you're still just being mindful of position. Now once you've done five and through there, so if you need to readjust position on the ball, you can, but I want you to press down on the ball. You're pressing down through the heel. So it's going to start to bring in the underside, okay? And as you're pressing down, I want you to feel like everything's having to engage in center to stop you from maybe lifting through that sit bone lifting through that side or twisting. So it's trying to keep that mindful position again of the pelvis being level as you press down. So just five movements. Once you've done five and through there, we're going to switch it over. So again, just light and floating. So the right leg floating, finding that position on the heel wherever it needs to be to feel comfortable. So it's nice and light, pressing out, pelvis level. And keeping again that Real focus on the ribs staying on the floor, the back staying in that, that space where there's just that tiny little air space between your lower back and the floor. Once you've done five of those single leg stretches, then we're going to use that push down. So again, if you need to alter foot position, you can. You're pressing down and then pulling back in. Pressing down and pulling back in. Keeping the pelvis nice and level. Keeping the upper body relaxed. Okay, so once you've done your five from there, then we're going to start to bring the ball up. So we're going to pop it between the feet to lift it. And I want you to pop it as much as you can between your knees. And it's probably going to be between knees and calves. So now legs have just got a lot heavier, okay? But if you feel that you need to alter um, the movement that we're doing, any of the versions that we've done so far, you can kind of backtrack to. So set your position, even pelvis, tummy and belly buttons all drawn in. 
you're going to lower the ball. So you can choose, do you go down just partial way? Or are you able to take it all the way down? Maybe it's the feet, maybe it's the ball that touches the floor. So we're taking it through 10 of these. And I want you to keep a little inner thigh squeeze going on at the same time. Just a little, maybe about a third of effort on the inner thigh squeeze. But I want you to keep really focused on what's happening in through your lower back. Lifting and drawing in. So 10 movements, keeping the ribs in and breathing with it. So where does your breath feel helpful? Is it a night breath that you need to help engage the tummy muscles in? Or is it an in-breath to feel like it builds tension? What keeps you in place better? Your breathing will probably naturally go to it. Now, once you've done your 10 and through there, we're gonna bring the ball in, in between the hands and we're just gonna float the legs. So just as a kind of a brief interlude, shoulder blades are setting down, keeping the ribs drawn in, lengthening the legs up as an option. You're gonna take one leg to the floor. Maybe it doesn't touch, you choose the size of the movement, but glute is active on that leg and then back up. Maybe you touch the ball. So it gives you like a destination. Where's your flexibility? Can you bring it up without the pelvis curling up and off the floor? So when you lower that leg, you're reaching along the way, you're pulling up inside, lasso or a piston to pull in to keep that control. So five each leg. And as you've, again, chosen your distance, those five each way, whichever that is, then we're gonna pop the ball in between the knees and the calves again. So this time, arm option, okay? We've had the arms down to the side. Can you take them into either I surrender position or maybe you're taking them up and over, okay? So the challenge this time is that the ribs are naturally, when the arms go up, the ribs are gonna naturally want to start to come off. So there's a little bit more, it's lower tummy, but it's starting to move up a little bit more as well. So again, we're lowering and lifting, lowering and lifting. If that feels too much, you can always bring the arms down, so using that scoop up inside. So again, that real feeling of pulling up and you have essentially a band around the midsection, your transversus, but you also have like a, a divide in your abdominals, two halves. So you need to make sure you've got two legs. You're still pulling up on both sides to help pull everything in. Never sacrificing the back position to take the legs further. Now, once you've done your 10 and through there, again, that pause position, we're gonna bring the ball up into the hands, shoulders drawing down into the sockets, okay? And you can grind the feet this time, okay? So taking the feet down, shoulders engage down the side seams, ribs are connected in, okay? We're gonna work single leg this time. So we're gonna take the right leg up. So you're gonna let that leg drift open to the side, option to work straight leg or option to work tabletop, softer version. So whichever one you're using, it's trying to pull you off center. So again, you're using that sense of that pull in. So now that lasso, if you like, has to be kind of pulled diagonally across. So that opposite movement, so when the leg goes out to the side, you're having to pull back in across opposite diagonal. So you're trying not to let the body roll. One body part moves one way, so something else has to move the other. Maybe it's your ribs that's trying to move the other. So taking it through, go for a full 10 on this. And the static leg is trying to stay knee pointing up to the ceiling. Now when you get to the end of the 10th one, we're gonna go into that straight switch. So if you need to readjust positions, I do. <laughs> I'm gonna reach the ball. So you're lifting. And again, you're lower. However far right that leg is able to go, trying to keep the other leg nice and static. So as you open it out, are you able, hopefully you've got the space, or adapt it to that leg as you need to, but is the pelvis staying stable? Maybe you're noticing a difference from one side to the other. Are the ribs still in place? Are the shoulder blades still down in the socket, but long arms? And is the neck nice and long? Pulling in with that lasso, that opposite diagonal to help keep the ribs on the floor 
to keep everything connected. And when you get to the end of the 10th one, we'll reset in here again back into center. So again, we're bringing that ball back in between knees and lower legs. So the arms are down, a little bit out to the sides. So with this one, we're going to take it a little bit to the sides. So again, lower tummy focus. You will, as you take it to the side, choose the size of your movement. Knees are pressing again, maybe about a third of effort in together. And as you press it over, I don't want your shoulders to come off the floor. So you're trying to keep that effort in there. Keep the shoulders in, drawing all your belly buttons in to help bring you back into center. So again, as you take it over to the other side, don't let the shoulders come off. Keep pressing them into the floor and then scoop and draw back in. And readjust. So again, knees pressing together. Lower tummy, especially on that focus that whenever you're pulling back in, start from there. It's a pull up inside as well as pulling everything through the spine to the floor. The more you keep the shoulders connected to the floor, it might restrict the size of your movement, but I want it to stay focused so that we're not just twisting the full spine out of alignment. It's just the lower half we're focusing on. So it's five each way. Now, once you've finished those five each way, again, you're going to take the ball in between the hands. So we're doing a combination movement this time. We're going to take the leg off in a diagonal. So the right leg is lifted. Again, shoulders connected in, ribs on the floor. So a little bit of external rotation on that top leg. And you're going to take it diagonally out to the side. So you're taking it away from you and then drawing it back in. And I want you to imagine that you're almost trying to kick the ball as you come to the top. If your range of movement allows, or if you need to soften the knee. So each time you're opening on that diagonal, you're trying to get that lengthening through that inner thigh into hip flexor, but still trying to keep that stability through the grounded leg, trying to keep the stability through your spine. So you don't just feel like all your weight drifts over onto one side. And we're taking it through 10. Lasso the leg back in. Lasso or piston, whatever works. Maybe you've got your own visual, whatever works to help you kind of make that connection to pull everything back in. Now, once you've done your 10, you can grind just as you need to. And again, once you're there, that effort maybe just to kick the ball a little and then open it out, stretching through the leg, pulling that hip bone, that thigh bone back into the socket as you draw back up. So you're trying to get that open length the slightly smaller muscles that we're tapping into on the top of the groin to get that open position and then that pull up through those fibers that lift down into the top of the hips, lower core, pelvic floor. Now once you get to your 10th one, okay, Again, you can re-center, you can just let the ball rest onto the ball, right? And place the heels, heels underneath the knees. And just take a, a shoulder bridge, rolling the spine up, rolling the spine back down, taking two of them. We're just kind of resetting in between again, rolling up and rolling back down. So this time, once you've done two, take a glute bridge, so long spine, Reaching up and reaching back down. Again, lengthening through your knees, squeezing, making sure both heels are pressing into the floor, both sets of glutes are working. And then take the feet that little bit wider, toes turned out, ball can be maybe a little bit lower on the thighs. And then again, pressing up and down and pressing up. Okay. So we're then going to adjust. We're going to pop the ball in between ankles, okay? So you need to find your steady place, just try not to drop it on you. <laughs> so again, maybe it's only about a, a quarter of a squeeze. Pop the feet in together, so just to get that inner thighs. If the knees need to bend a little bit, they can do, okay? 
depending on your range. I don't want you to be in straight legs and then have the tailbone lifted off. So you're trying to ground the tailbone. So again, that same set position that we started with, ribs are in, pelvis is flat, equally weighted, both legs pressing in. A little sense of external rotation on the legs as well. So it just gets that connection in through sit bones. So we're gonna go small movements first of all. So we're just lowering, maybe only around about sort of, not even sort of 30 degrees and back in. We're only going for five. Pistons idea or the suit, pulling the thighs into the socket to pull and zip everything back in. Try not to let the back go into an arch. If you're finding that you need to soften, then again, you can soften because still working with the knees bent in this position, the weight is still further away from you. So we're then going to take it a little bit lower. Again, option for five to go lower, no lower than 45 degrees. When you come up, don't let the tail curl off. You're hinging at the hip, the back is not changing. It's staying stable. Again, a little extra rotation on the thigh, squeeze of those legs in together. And keeping for those five movements, that drawing. And then soften once you're done. And you can let the ball just rest onto the legs. So lengthen the legs out. So these movements can be quite heavy on hip flexors, which the emphasis on that pull up inside and really connecting to the lower tummy is what's trying to take it out of the hip flexors. It doesn't completely, they have to work, but it's making sure that they're not doing everything. So you're just lengthening out through the legs, maybe just give them a little roll, internal, external, just let them kind of roll about just to hopefully help soften off a little. Okay. So for the next one, we're coming up into your roll up before we come back into the, the legs a little bit more. Now in the roll up, yes, we are on a lower tummy focus. I want you to keep that sense of that zip up and that pull in. So it's really coming from there for the movement. If you know you need a pillow underneath your lower back for this to help, you can use it. But using the ball, just holding it onto the thighs, nod of the chin, upper tummy kicks in. But again, focus, lower tummy scooping in to help keep, keep you pulling the front of the body to the back of the body for that reach up and over. And then again, on the way back, keep the rounding, keep pulling in, pelvic floor drawing up, move the ball as you need to, and lengthen. But even as you lengthen, you're not going into that back arch, you're keeping everything locked in. Again, nod off the chin, scoop it in, pull it in through, it through the back of the body, feel that rounding, and again, scoop it in, roll it back. So in terms of trying to keep all of that connecting, when the, the lower fibres of the transversus engage, it's that wrap around, that shrink wrap around the waist that gives you more of that kind of flatter abs appearance. Whether it's the appearance you want or whether it's just the functional strength, it does both win-win. So taking it through five, Always keeping that scoop in so you're really focusing in on that pull up inside. So when you finish your fifth one, okay, we're going to keep you on the floor. And we're going to bring it in so that we have the ball in between the feet again, okay. So we're going to take, this is just a little bit of control more than anything but it still should work a little bit of inner and outer thighs, but still trying to keep the pelvis, everything stable. We're gonna take that rotation. So when I'm in this position, I'm squeezing front and back with my legs to squeeze the ball as I transfer three times more into inner thighs. Again, you can choose how hard you wanna squeeze the ball on this. You can squeeze it again, maybe about that quarter effort, third of effort, or anywhere up to full strength. But making sure that you really are focusing a little bit of external rotation on the thighs, but keeping, zip up, keeping everything pulling front of the body to the back of the body. Adjust the ball if you need to, if it's likely to fall on you. So we're taking it five each way. Both sides of the waist staying nice and long. And once you've done five each way, just pop the ball down, rest the legs on top. Okay. So in closer to you, just a little bit softer. We're just gonna bring a little bit of length into it. So even though we're working very much the front, I want to make sure that we're not just becoming really heavy dominant and working the hip flexor. So we're gonna get your glutes um, waking up a little bit more. So again, once you're ready, further away, just makes everything work a little bit more. 
closer in, a little bit softer. So you choose your version, okay? For this position, he's on the center of the ball. So legs are together, feeling that connection again with the ribs and the low back. Glute bridge, just pressing the hips up, pressing the heels down, lengthening. And as that opposite movement, you're still pulling up as if you're pulling everything into the body. And then back down. So we're taking 10, lengthening and lifting. When we lift up on this, the ribs can want to shoot out. So you're keeping them drawn in, but still gets our upper part of the core, if you like. But your zip up focus is on keeping everything in the front of the body, connecting to the back of the body. So we're taking through 10 movements. Okay, so hopefully that's getting the glutes and a little bit of inner thighs, working with that leg squeeze, pulling in. So that again, it's trying to take it out of those hip flexors for a moment, but still keeping that focus into the lower tummy. Now, once you're done, we're coming back up with the ball again. So we're bringing it into a double leg lower again. So you can adjust it in between the feet. Softer version again between knees and calves. So you can choose how far this movement goes this time, okay? But remember, you're not sacrificing the position of your back for anything. So when you lower, if you feel that you go even lower and you can't control that position, don't go any lower. So in Pilates, very often, like 45 degrees is like a maximum, a little external rotation on the legs, but certainly in any other kind of fitness circle you can go into, you can lower the legs. It's not that it's necessarily bad, you just need to make sure you feel strong enough that you can keep that zip up, keep everything pulling in, and making sure that the ribs don't come up and off. So maybe it stays small, maybe it's a big movement. We're going for 10, whatever you can control. And again, that little bit of external rotation just helps you kind of plug everything in, keep a little bit of glute activity. Now, once you get to the end of your 10th one, again, soften it in. And again, I just want to pull it out of this hip flexor, so bring it back into the glute. So we're going to take those six movements where you're just taking, again, that shoulder bridge rolling for two. Feet can be around about that hip distance apart for the first two. Rolling the spine, abs are working, hips are opening. Then take it into glute bridge. So just lifting and lowering for two. And then taking the feet wide, that little turn out on the feet again, the ball can be maybe more on the tummy, tops of the thighs, two movements. So every movement that we do that way as a realignment is for you to assess. Are you starting to become more dominant on one side than the other? Does it feel like things are still pretty even? So you're trying to reset in between. So the next movement we're doing is taking it side to side. Okay, so it's making sure again that you have enough room for this one. Um, again, you can choose that if you want to keep the ball in between the knees, softer version, or if you want to go between the feet. Shoulders still must stay on the floor. So when you're taking the ball to the side, if your shoulder starts to come off, that's far enough, and back in. So you're taking it over, imagine that you're keeping the feet pretty level, drawing in. And again, reaching across, pelvis may want to come off, but are the shoulders staying in contact? each way. So ribs are pulling back into centre as the legs move out to the side. So you're trying even, shoulder stays on the floor, trying to keep it almost like the ribs staying on the floor. Again, what's happening in that tummy area? Are you keeping everything drawn in? Zipping up, pulling in, keeping that under control. And again, once you're done through there, you can pop the, the feet on top of the ball. We'll take our two twos and twos again, but we'll do them with the feet on top of the ball unless you want to grind the feet again. So you can take two shoulder bridge, either in close or far away, feet together, rolling it up, zipping up and back down. So that hopefully this is giving your, your hip flexors just a little bit of an active stretch. And then again, two shoulder bridges into two glute bridges, lengthen and open. Get those glutes switching on. 
And we can still on the ball go into external rotation with the feet wide on the ball, almost like they're going to fall off unless you're squeezing them in together. And again, glute bridge and down, glute bridge and down. Okay. So the last movement in this um, section is taking the legs in the diagonal. So the same way as we did with that single leg, okay, you're now doing it with two legs with the weight of a ball, okay. So again, you can draw it up, you can choose whether you want to work with the ball in a little bit closer, it might feel a bit ungainly, but you can work with it in a little bit closer. So you're using essentially a bit like a shorter lever, or if you want to go full, full hog, then the ball is between the feet and ankles again. So you're taking it into that diagonal. So the legs will kind of rotate a little bit so that your knees are pointing in that diagonal direction, almost to the, the, the corner of the room. So that as the, the ball is drifting from one side to the other, ribs still stay in place as much as you can. You're pulling it back in again each time. You're drifting lower. Maybe you're taking it further away. What size of movement are you able to work with without taking the spine into a compromised position? Five each way. And once you've done those five each way, again, maybe just align heaven to soften onto the floor. If you want, you can still have the feet on the ball for these, um, otherwise feet on the floor. You can choose to shoulder bridge, so rolling the spine up. Again, immediately trying to get those hip flexors, if they've been overactive, trying to get them switching off, get the glutes switching on. And then again, to glute bridge. And then taking the feet wide, little turn out. And again, another two glute bridge. Okay. So again, that's been a, a blast into the lower tummy, adding the extra weight of the ball. So hopefully that has felt like a nice, a nice deep focus into the lower tummy. The idea of pulling the legs in when we're on all fours, that's aiming at lower tummy focus, okay? The starting position that we'll take it from, again, is that sensation of that scoop in and under, and it's that movement of pulling in that creates the lift, okay? So keep the ball in close. You're gonna walk it over, and we're gonna bring it into position, not putting too much weight on the arms yet, because I haven't really done too much with them, okay? From that the previous blast. So shoulder blades are down the side seams. You're pushing long into the arms. External rotation on those upper arms and making sure you're not just kind of like a silly chip. You're trying to keep the, the ribs, everything kind of pulling in. But imagine that it's the focus of that zip up and the your multiple belly buttons pulling in towards your back and then release. Again pulling in and then release. So even if you're watching yourself in another screen or if you've got a mirror or something that you can see in, that you know that you're going from a back bend and then really strongly pulling in to bring you into that more neutral space. You're not going beyond it yet, okay? So you're very clear about where your straight position is, that connection between pubic bone to rib cage. So just doing a few, you should feel that connection, you should feel those muscles working. And hopefully it feels like they have already worked before that. So once you've done 10 of those, those little pull-ins, then walk it back. Remember when you're walking, don't just take a hand off because you'll collapse. Push into one hand, push it long into the floor so that it enables you to walk back and nice and secure. Okay. So you know yourself in terms of this if you've done it before. Um, how much further you walk out makes it an awful lot more difficult and you still have to have enough juice in the tank to be able to walk back and hopefully not fall off your ball. So um, choose the size carefully. So pull it in as we walk it forwards. So softest version will be just taking the weight onto the thighs. Again, opportunity to kind of like <laughs> collapse and be in really bad technique. So scoop in through the tummy, legs almost kind of squeezing in together so that it's more like you've got one leg than two, everything's tight together. So the tummy is in nice and tight, the arms are pushing, they're pulling back against the ball. The more you pull back into the ball with the arms, the more it's going to work you into the lower tummy as well. So you're scooping in and pulling the knees under, and then you're going to press them back. And as you press them back, again, that scooping through the tummy, so you don't so you chip it, you're going to keep it in. 
So again, pulling it in and under. So as much as this is working arms, I want you to keep the focus on that lower tummy connection. So everything's staying pretty stable through the spine when you come out into that kind of dart like position. At the end, bottom squeezed, legs tight together, lower tummy pulling in. Once you've done five, enough juice, walk it back, push through the floor to lift a hand to bring you back in. Okay. So in terms of making like every little step a little bit further, okay, you know in terms of how the arms are coping, how everything's coping, whether you can go to the next stage or whether you stay with that version, okay? We're hitting out with fives on things so you can see how you feel. So the next version, we're gonna keep the legs straight rather than bending. So we do need to walk out a little bit further for this one to get the range of movement that we wanna work with. So if it feels like that isn't good, you come back into a bent leg position. Legs together, two legs become one. Again, maybe taking it out a little bit more if you can to knees. Again, more opportunity to be an even so over your chip, but don't pull the lower tummy in, zip up, front of the body connecting to the back of the body. And then whenever you're ready, again, you're trying to pull in. The knees are gonna to wanna to bend, don't let them. You're gonna scoop in through the tummy and you're pulling your wrist towards the ball and then back down again. So you are gonna get your lats in this, but it should feel like quite a strong lower tummy connection. So we're only going part way because I don't want you to use the arms more than necessary for this. You're focusing it on the lower tummy. Again, that scoop in just for five and then walking it back out. So that's quite a tough one. In terms of that, if you're getting that pull down with the arms and you're getting that kind of scoop in with the tummy, you should be really feeling that down the sides and into the, the lower tummy. So the next one, we are going to take it a little bit further so that it does become a bit stronger. So it is going to start to feed more into arms. So if you want to keep it more into the tummy and not feeding into arms, then stay with that version. But if you know you can take it further, then we're going to go higher with that. So walking it out option is again, just to stay around the knees. You could go below the knees on this one. And again, whenever you're ready, set the shoulders. Long arm, shoulders down the side, seems external rotation. No soggy chip. Everything going in, two legs become one. So that's scooping through the tummy, keep scooping in, the arms have to pull to the ball more and push through the floor. They are multitasking at their best. No soggy chip on the return out. So again, scooping it in and then releasing it back. So this could go all the way up to kind of half a handstand, but I don't, that's not your focus. Your focus is on pulling the, the skin on the front of the body to the back of the body. So you're really delving into that lower tummy. Now once you've done your five, again enough juice in the tank, push through the floor, walk it back. <laughs> and maybe if it feels that you want to, you just let the body hang over the ball, let the head relax. Okay. Okay, so let me bring it up. And I'm hoping that you felt that even more in the lower tummy, because I know I definitely did. So I'm hoping. So after having worked all of those areas, we need to do a bit of a stretch out. Uh, you've really focused into there if you've done all of that with me. I certainly am feeling it, so we want to make sure that we get an appropriate stretch out on those areas. You can certainly do a more thorough stretch after you finish, but I'm going to target those key areas that we were focusing into. So we're going to bring you up into standing so you can take the ball out of the way. <laughs> after you've done so much work with focusing into hip flexors, as much as stretching out through the quads, that taking the foot in behind, keeping that zip up in place, it really does open the front of the hip as the main focus rather than really getting the heel towards the bottom. Maybe softening the standing leg if you're in standing to try to take the knee further behind, but holding it there at a good stretch sensation until you feel that easing out. And notice the difference when you're doing both sides, just notice the difference. Does one side feel tighter than the other? Because when you've been going through all of that work, especially if you maybe don't notice on the way through that one side is maybe working harder than the other, and um, it might have been happening. So 
it's a case of if one side is tighter, it's either not coping with the workload or it's working harder. And either way, you want to try and stretch that downrain after. And then just with your like internal feedback as you're going through a session on the ball like that, that you're trying to figure out, are you being dominant with one side? Is one side being lazy? So that you can identify those differences between the two. So stretching out through those hip flexors would be pretty good. Once you're done from there, then place the hands onto your bottom. Squeeze the elbows a little bit together. So you're kind of popping out through the chest, but I want you to imagine that you're pushing the hips open. I don't want you to collapse into the back. I want you to get this sense that you're still kind of lifting up to open up. So you're just opening up the front of those hips and open up a little bit in the front of the abs. This is a kind of soft stretch. And then release. And we're going to take it down onto the floor and we're going to do and um, we're going to do a cobra stretch but we're going to do a couple of different positions just so that we're getting the stretch hopefully a little bit into the abs so elbows underneath the shoulders so you're setting up that idea of trying to like lengthen the elbows into the floor and pull the shoulders back so imagine you're pulling your chest through i'm essentially trying to pull my spine out of my pelvis you're pulling it forwards so you're trying to get a little bit of length and through there. You are working the arms at the same time. Now from there, I want you to imagine that you're trying to put your ribs on the floor. So you're going to be lifted, but can you pull them forward and press them towards the floor? Arm position can vary at this point. So if you feel you'd rather have your arms out a little bit more to push down and pull back. So they're trying to pull your rib cage further forward and to press it down. The bend in my back is happening more towards sort of lower, lower ribs, lower shoulder blades. My arms are working quite hard here to try to get enough of a pull to pull me forward and try to pull my ribs down so it's a bit of a stretch. But maybe you need to go higher, but still feeling, even though the ribs might not be on the floor, you're still pulling them forwards and down. And hopefully that feels like it's a bit of a stretch in through the stomach. At least it is opening it out. Okay, and then slowly relax the upper body down, lift the head onto your hands, just allow the knees to bend, and just a little sway of the heels side to side, and as you're swaying them from side to side, you're just trying to relax things off a little, just to let everything through that lower chain go a little bit looser. Okay, soften it down, take it back into your child's pose. Maybe with the knees a little bit apart. Allow the arms to lengthen out. A few deep breaths, maybe a little wiggle of the rib side to side. As much as we've worked lower tummy, you've worked everything in through the core. So that little movement of the rib side to side, shoulder side to side might just give a wee bit of a stretch in through there as well, and you've used your lats. Again, a few deep breaths in, send it into the mid back, and let it release. And again, rounding, still reaching through the arms if you can. Take that last breath and let it soften. Walking the hands back and allowing the spine to come up in to straight. So I hope you really enjoyed that session. Maybe a little bit more of a challenge, uh, depending on how hard you pushed it. But if you enjoyed it, certainly leave us a like. Uh, let us know in the comments. I'd love to know your feedback. Um, and subscribe to the channel for whenever we add more videos. And hopefully we'll see you again soon. Bye.